Hey guys, what is up? It is a rep mark here. Yep, and also Fire Dragon Fly. That's right, and this is our official rep and fire review of the Kingsman 2, the Golden Circle. Indeed. Indeed. And so we went in this, we hadn't seen the first one in theaters. We ended up no. actually watching it in actually, uh, the same day. Yeah. <laughs> we watched it early in the morning before we decided to go to the showing. Yeah. So. And it was uh it was definitely entertaining. Like yeah. we both loved how the Kingsman like had with the the way it stylized its fight scenes, its its violence, how it was so over the top. Mm -hmm. It was it was really entertaining. And like looking at a couple of reviews, like we were Kind of hesitating first. Yeah, we're well, kind at of at least right now, anyways. Maybe a little bit on, but it was just a little bit hesitant at first doing it this weekend. Yeah, because I mean, we heard it was like filmed with the same things that most sequels do, mm -hmm. which, to be fair, is kind of, true. kind of true. I mean, I don't think it really adds anything to the formula. True. But I don't think that's a bad thing either. No. Like, I think for a sequel, this was actually really well done. Mm hmm. Ugh. Indeed. That was nasty. <laughs> <laughs> Food coming up. Anyway, but, um, yeah, I was going into it not thinking I'd be as entertained as I actually was. I can agree with that. And I think for the most part, they tried to... Like, I could definitely see where it was just like, let's see what worked for the first movie, and then just do more, more of, of it. it. Just, yeah, like explore a little bit more into it, yeah. Yeah, and I think they try to cover the cover the fact of that just with more emotional beats to it. And it definitely mm -hmm. had those. Yeah. Some worked better than others, but Yeah. Well, some emotional things work better than others anyways in life. So Indeed. there you go. <laughs> Indeed. But yeah, it was it was it was I think it was well executed, is what I'm trying to say, and and I was amazed. Like it's like the way you you described it. You gotta go ahead and describe it. Like the whole synop like synopsis of like what you fit the franchise is to you so far. What was it like? The guy would who has nothing yeah, and I mean, stuff like that. You started off, I mean, yes, I'm talking more, of course, about the first of first of but, the story. But yeah, going into the second yes. one, yeah. I mean, he starts off as being this kid. I mean, yes, he loses his father. And his life, he grows up and is almost like just this nothing. He has nothing. And then he's picked up by this guy who helps him out. And next thing you know, I mean, he's considered a kingsman at this point. He's a gentleman. He's this amazing just person that can do all sorts of neat shit. <laughs> yeah. Technically based on what he was taught. Going into this movie, I mean, I mean, yeah, I, he's still he's the kingsman and he's one of the kingsmen there. He's learned quite a bit, I, but in this case, instead of the emotional uh, ties of maybe family uh, there, you have more of the emotional of course of, of of his girlfriend and then of course from the first movie uh, losing his friend mm -hmm. so, but in the end I mean you see this kid go from nothing to definitely something and then from something to something even greater indeed it's so. it's 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 very interesting that way yeah. and just the whole but I mean, at the same time, the, both movies, especially the second one, like they were very, very cliched. You have over-the-top villains. You have mm -hmm. very just convoluted, like machines and stuff like this, and yep. just crazy stuff. Like even when people are shot, like the the blood explosions are just like so <laughs> over the top. <laughs> True. I mean, it looks neat, but yeah, it's it's very cliched. <laughs> I think both of them were, to be honest. Yeah, but but 
it, it worked for the movie. Sense. Like that was the style. That was a style. That was a stylized decision. And you know they they had fun with it, and I think that was the greatest part with it. Exactly. And yeah, there are certain parts I want to talk about. I'll have to wait until the spoiler section, but that were just so amusing. I was just like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, with this one, it's like obviously it's you know pretty cookie cutter you know it's saved the world yeah. you know your protagonist is dealing with like personal issues true yep you know and then you have the whole mentor thing come into play which we'll go into more in the spoilers, spoilers. again yep and you know he, he comes in kicks a lot of ass there's usually what two or three fight scenes and then the, the well it's three including the final one right at least definitely for you go. Yeah, for this one there was I like, like without getting into it, you know, there was the the bar fight. Mm -hmm. Then there was uh the the fight on the mountain mm -hmm. which was ridiculous. <laughs> it was so ridiculous, but it was so entertaining to watch. Mm -hmm. And then there was uh well, you had the, of course you had kind of the fight there when there um the island there. Well, yeah, I mean that's the, the final, final, the final showdown. Like that's what I'm talking about. Oh yes. There would have been another one at the end, but it ended back at the park. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, yeah. Indeed, yeah, we're yeah. So, but yeah, I, I like the stylized choice they do, like with the mm -hmm. fight scenes, like. Indeed. Like, I know you're not as much into, like, I have my film degree and all that. I know you don't. You kind of mm -hmm. just more and more for the story and stuff like that. But, I mean, you, you had to notice on the on the scenes where it seemed like it was, like, sped up but not by a lot. Yeah, and course. then how they cut out certain frames certain just frames. to make it look more fluid. Mm -hmm. like, you, you, like, you got that, right? Yeah. All right, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. And, yeah, like, the whole stylized choices they make. You know, the over-the-top explosions, freaking... And they don't, like, show... It. Well, I mean, they do, but they don't show, like, all the bloody, gory bits. Like, there's a point yeah. where a guy's neck gets broken and it's done off-camera. You know? Yeah. But then there's another one where a guy goes into a, a meat grinder and... <laughs> like, it doesn't show anything, but, I mean, it's very apparent on what's going on. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Yeah, so I mean, it's just it's it's violent, but it's it's fun. Which I mean, I know there might be some people that would take exception to that and think I'm just I'm glorifying, but I'm not. I'm saying it's yeah. it's done in a fun way. It's not done in an overly serious like well, no, you know, like your typical like thriller, thriller, yeah, you know, or slasher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was done. In a fun way, it's almost it's almost like, uh, oh my god, I just lost his name, like a big YouTuber who does stuff like that. Uh, I don't know, it might come to me later, but anyway, <laughs> I digress. Um, He's hanging around me too much. <laughs> <laughs> just <possibly>. joking. <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I walked out of there feeling very... Very, very entertained. Very entertained. Yeah, I don't think it was a waste of my money at all. I think it was very entertaining. I think it worked where it needed to work. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's a, a movie... There might be better ones out there, but I think it's a movie that is worth seeing. Like, if you like the first one, you'll probably like the second one. Yeah. You know, more than likely. Like because it still has all the same, like stylization, the same like over the topness, the same fun that the first one had. It just has more of it, mm -hmm. which I mean could be a good or a bad thing depending on how you look at those things. I mean I typically look down on it as a bad thing because it can get stale. But after a while, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I, I don't think it turns stale for this one. No. You know, it's 
It's not like freaking Land Before Time where they I know. where are they like the twenty fourth <laughs> or some ridiculous thing like that. All the voice actors have changed from the originals. <laughs> it's yeah, it's not like that. This mm -hmm. one I think well not adding anything, I don't think it being a sequel hurt it, it as bad it. as it normally would have. Mm -hmm. I think it's, yeah, and again, the story was great. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, so let me explain. By great, I don't mean it was like a great story. I mean, like all spy things, the, the plot's convoluted. Some of it is fairly nonsensical. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the characters are like larger than life and just walking stereotypes. And yeah, it was very cliche, yeah. but it was entertaining. It had, you know, emotion beats where where it needed to. I mean, some of them seemed hammed in, but I don't think it hit a point to where it didn't work for me. Mm -hmm. Like, what do you, what are your, what is your full opinion on that? Yeah, I mean, I really, I was entertained pretty much on, for the most part. Um, every single scene from, for the most part. I mean, there was always something at least happening very shortly that kept my interest especially the puppies yes because you love, I love puppies, my puppies. <laughs> yeah what puppies were there there was uh, the the pug. the pug and what was the other one though that was I some sort of terrier right it looked like some kind of terrier i just don't remember what kind yeah and we'll, we'll get into that more of like the specific dogs and the roles they played uh in the spoiler yeah. section obviously because we don't want to sort of ruin it for you guys. I know, but I love my puppies. Indeed. <laughs> You're obsessed with the puppies. I can't help it. They're cute and adorable. Indeed. Alright, so the moment of truth. What What would you give, give, what score out of 10 would you give this movie? Myself, I'd still, I think I'd give it an 8. Okay, and why? Myself, I'd be I still feel like it was a good movie, a really good movie, and I mean, I still like the story, everything that went with it, but yeah, I mean, technically, yes, they could have gone a little bit more into it, and kind of actually had something new to bring to it, I understand that, but otherwise, I mean, no, I'd say I'd give it an 8, just because it was still very entertaining, it was a great story, for me, anyways. So you would recommend other people go to this movie? I still would, yeah. Okay. It was fun. Indeed. I was about ready to give this movie a 7 because it was a sequel, but there was something which I, I can't mention here. It's going to have to be in the spoilers, so stick around and watch that if you want to see that. But yeah, something that happened where I'm just like, no, nah, this is getting an 8. <laughs> this, is, this is getting an 8. Solid 8. Like, again, it was, it was very cliched. It was very, like, you know, it was sequel-ish. Mm -hmm. You know, it didn't add anything new. I don't think they took chances that they could have with it. Mm -hmm. But they went over the top in some places. <laughs> yeah, well, well, I mean, it was always over the top. I don't think that's where it saved it. I mean, I think that's where its charm is, is it's over the top in this. But I think what saved it, what actually added, or attempted to add some freshness, were the emotional, emotional. beats. Yeah, and we'll get into those more in the uh, the spoiler section. Of course. Some of the choices for cast, I mean, definitely still were also very good, I feel. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll get, yeah. <laughs> oh, my gosh, Julianne Moore is the, as the villain. Mm -hmm. Like, I, from her, I almost got, like, this Martha Stewart, Stewart. beat. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> kidding. <laughs> yeah, we'll get into that more, so... Just right after this. Indeed. All right, so here is the spoiler, spoiler section. section. Indeed. All right, so we, we're gonna, you know, rehash some of the first one just to actually get some point more points across. But yeah, yeah, I mean, you have the essentially. Oh God, what is his name? Exy. Exy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. He, you know, he's a established Kingsman at this point. Mm -hmm. You know, and then the villain, Julianne Moore, 
who <laughs> this very very Martha Stewartish type type person like oh my gosh uh, I digress but yeah he she takes out almost the entire organization mm -hmm. so they are forced to go into this distillery to find the secret of like what can help them. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And it leads them to this distillery in Kentucky, Kentucky. Yep. Kentucky. you know, where they find uh, an American organization called the Statesmen. Yep. And yeah, so <laughs> the Kingsman meets the Statesmen, mm -hmm. and it was it was very entertaining. Like we had uh, like Channing Tatum. What was what was his name? It was. Uh, uh, one of them. Like yeah, tequila. tequila. It was tequila, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, and he's like the bad boy <laughs> ruffian of the of the group. Mm -hmm. Freaking does drugs, <laughs> and that that brings a whole thing. Like Martha Stewart's plan, she's a big drug, drug dealer, dealer. <laughs> and so her plan is to get drugs legalized, and that's another that's interesting thing. Wow. Like it's just certain good things like I don't think heroin and cocaine and stuff like that but marijuana you know I think mm -hmm. it, it helps people so I think there should be certain regulation and taxation based on some of that just based on that because it's all underground anyway of course you know like with Samuel L. Jackson's part in the first, <laughs> the first one, one it's just like we gotta stop global warming, warming. but there's too many people global to do it warming. we're fucked <laughs> mm -hmm. but yeah and yeah, she, she's got this Martha Stewart personality mm -hmm. where she's just the sweetest, nicest person ever, but she does the craziest things. Like when she first hired on uh, a hench, like one of her henchmen Hench brought, brought home a, a recruit. recruit. And apparently he had screwed up somewhere because her first <laughs> order to him was to put him put into him a meat grinder. grinder. <laughs> Indeed. Which he did, and it, <laughs> it was... It was so over so, the top. It was so. What did you think of that? Yeah, that was, was pretty, pretty brutal. That's for sure. <laughs> and then, of course, when you see the meat coming out of there, and the whole idea that they went into the diner to begin with, because oh, they were gonna, they were gonna have a meal. Yeah. <laughs> so they go into the diner. I mean, he ends up taking out his his buddy, and while his meat. Uh, Parts of him is coming out, so you see the meat of it. Uh, she sends him off to go get a makeover. <laughs> and then when he comes back, there's this lovely little burger there sitting <laughs> for him. <laughs> he, a, he looks so, so <laughs> horrified. It was, it was so entertaining to watch that. <laughs> but yes, anyway, she launches this attack on them. It kills, like... All of the Kingsmen, their leadership. I know. Even one of Roxy. his friends and his dog. I know. What was his, what was the dog's name? Mm -hmm. JB. JB, something like JB that. JB or JD. I think it was JB. Yeah, JB, I believe. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, uh, John Bowers. Yeah, that's because yeah, JB. Okay, <laughs> I remember that from the first one. <laughs> and yeah, it was sad. And so his yes. girlfriend, he actually ended up starting to date this. Uh, mm -hmm. What was it? The this Swedish princess I think mm -hmm. and yeah she, so she's his girlfriend now yes <laughs> and you know they meet mommy and daddy yes well. and that's that's where the whole thing like started going down <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah and it was it was crazy and oh my gosh the what else like Again, the scenery is like we're in uh, Cambodia for yep, her. Yep, Cambodia for. Um, oh gosh, I forgot her name. Oh, what, what's her name? We can look Poppy. that up really quick. Poppy. Poppy. There yep. we go. I had to think about that for a minute. I'm like, wait, what was it? So pop. It's kind of like Poppy Land. <laughs> yeah, and then and then you got and yeah, it was. <laughs> but it was called Poppy Land again. The over the topness of the whole. Thing. It's just so she has her own little theater. There's a diner. There's this little hair salon. Little like little cle uh, little places uh, from like the she said what the 50s 60s oh, yeah. <laughs> that she really enjoyed and loved that she had brought into this little tiny 
the area of this jungle um, part of Cambodia. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Around, uh, amongst all these ruins, of course. <laughs> yeah. So all of the survivors of the King's Wind, you had uh, Colin Firth, uh, who was uh, Harry Hart. Yeah. And then uh, Mark Strong, who played Merlin, of course. Very strong character. Yeah, he actually ends up sacrificing himself yeah. towards the end at the final battle. It was it was actually kind of touching. and It was kind of amusing because he goes out by singing. Mm -hmm. Indeed. Yeah, it was it was epic. But yeah, so she's Julianne Moore's character, Poppy. She's planning to get all drugs legalized by essentially anyone who does her drugs. She essentially owns the drug trade somehow by now. That that part was a little bit convoluted, not <laughs> realistic. But you know, again, suspending belief and all that. Yep. <laughs> Spy movie. Um, by essentially plant putting this virus into all of her products so if it's done you get this disease that essentially kills you after what is it 12 hours I so. yeah I start off with of course the blue rash yeah and, and then, then dementia and dancing yeah, yeah and then you get to the uh, more the paralyzed just you're stuck and frozen state and then that leads to after that death yeah asphyxiation which yeah caused blood and all that to come out which was again the over the topness and uh who are the statesmen so we had Channing Tatum he was tequila you have Paul or Pedro Pascal which if you guys don't know uh was Prince Oberyn in uh, Game of Thrones mm -hmm. you know he was whiskey yeah, and then, god damn it, what was, Je yeah, Jeff Bridges, what was his code name? Champagne, but he went by champ. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Indeed. It was awesome. And then, yeah, so they they found Henry Hart, his, uh, mm -hmm. Eggsy's old mentor, who had thought he had died, because yep. he got, like, shot in the head through the eye. Yep, right, through the eye. Indeed, so that that was crazy. They like found him, they saved him. Mm -hmm. Um, well, they saved his life, anyways, but he wasn't fully him. He had lost many of his memories. Of yeah, his life and who he had become. Just the memories of what he wanted to do uh, previously before he joined the army. Indeed. And what ultimately brings him back is Eggsy actually gets him this terrier dog, the same breed as the dog, which if, for those Pickle. of you who haven't seen it, yeah, Pickle, or mm -hmm. Mr. Pickle, mm -hmm. yes. and, you know, this is going to spoil the first one, but, you know, whatever, this is a spoiler section. Indeed. You know, that's his, the dog, essentially as a Kingsman, you get a dog, you're supposed to go through your entire training with it, train it well, mm -hmm. and at the end, you're to shoot it. But just with blanks. But you don't know that at the time. Indeed. And then you just take care of it for the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. So yes. And so yeah, he gets him a little puppy and it brings back all of his memories because he's just like, you he's, want me to shoot, shoot it? Him. And yeah, he's saying he's going to shoot him, uh, shoot the dog. And he's like, no, why would you do that to, to such a small creature? Mm-hmm. <laughs> And he refused. He just kept holding on to the puppy and just like, no, backing up and just like, no, no. And then everything just kind of clicked and came back to him. Yeah, the flashback part was, was very interesting. It was just so fast paced, but yet you got a nut enough of a glimpse to actually capture every everything and totally get it. Mm -hmm. You know, and. Eggsy also got a replacement for his dog from his yeah. girlfriend, who is the Swedish princess, of course. Yes, you know. Be. Poor JP. He's no more. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, but because... But new one is still very cute, too. Mm -hmm. But yeah, he, they were kind of dealing with issues based on the fact that, you know, she wants to go forward with the relationship, relationship. whereas mm -hmm. he, being a spy, it would essentially make him a prince of Sweden. Mm -hmm. And, you know, he wasn't sure if he was ready for that or if it would clash with his, you know, job and all that. Mm -hmm. Eventually, like, he comes to realize, yes, he loves her and all that kind of stuff. Like, 
to be honest, that, that part of the story was a little bit hammy. Oh. I mean, I thought it was it was still romantic, but it was kind of <laughs> hammy to me. It's okay. You're not a woman. I know. What'd you I, think of it? I thought it was cute. It definitely had its cute thing. I just don't think they they built on it in a, a way that... I mean, yeah, they could have built more onto it, but for what it was, I thought it was cute. And mm -hmm. sweet. And then, oh my gosh, Julianne Moore was the perfect person. I think they could have gotten <laughs> for that role. What do you think? For After Bobby, Samuel was... L. Jackson for the first one. That was that was awesome, yes. Yeah, Julianne Moore. Literally <laughs> the most Martha Stewart like <laughs> enemy you could think. Like she's just laughing and giggling like this homemaker, like mm -hmm. I I didn't want to do this. <laughs> I want to go home. Now I'm like the most successful businesswoman in the world and no one even knows who I am. <laughs> Indeed. Oh my gosh. And of course, I mean... And she, she, like, you mentioned like she had this theater. Mm -hmm. So apparently in the whole chaos of like the first one, she managed to kidnap Elton John. <laughs> <laughs> that was awesome. Because, and you read something about that. Uh, go ahead and, sh and share that. Yeah, well, of course, the, the, of course, the producers, or the, the people who made the film, they asked uh, Elton John if they would actually join and be part of the first movie. And at the time, he's just like, no, no, it's all right, no, and denied, and so they're like, okay, they fell back. So Elton John, he went and checked out the movie, of course, after it came out, and <laughs> of course, after he saw that, his response again was, you say it? No, you, you just kind of forgot. Of course I did. <laughs> okay, sorry. Brain damage, I go. <laughs> anyway, I'm, something to the extent of, like, I'm a total ingrate. Yes, okay. And but so then, the, yeah, and then they called him back again, and after when they decided to do the second one, and asked if he would be in the second one, and he just, uh, this part of I mean, I do know, is like, just tell me when and where, and I'll be there. Mm-hmm. So. And yeah, oh my god, like, if you think it's just a cameo role for him, like, it's not. <laughs> he plays, he doesn't play a major part in it, but the no. parts he is in are so memorable. Like, the first time you see him, he's playing this piano, and he's just like, <laughs> and suddenly he starts to get this blue rash, and that's where you find out about what her plan is about contaminating the drugs. Apparently, he'd been doing some drugs with Angel, her new henchman. <laughs> And yeah, so that leads into a scene where he's literally sitting outside and Angel's invited into the into the food place. She doesn't make him into a burger, but she has her dog. She has two electrical dogs. Mm -hmm. One is like named Freddy and the other one. Do you remember what the other one's name is? Beanie? Be Beanie, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. I could be wrong. I mean, you can look that stuff up, um, but yeah, two two <laughs> two robot dogs, and they chase him down. They essentially just tear him in half mm -hmm. while Elton John's watching all this, mm -hmm. and then they move on to attack him, and she's just like, mm -hmm. you know, just does her little thing on her like iPad, I think it is, yeah. and just like, like Elton oh, John, friend. friend. <laughs> <laughs> so no, do not attack him. <laughs> mm -hmm. Which comes into play later, later. in the movie. Right. So at, during the final battle, he's involved, and it's just like, is this a rescue attempt? And just like maybe. maybe, and he's just like, Wednesday, Wednesday. Wednesday. <laughs> he starts singing Saturday, but Wednesday. <laughs> and then yeah, like, like the, that's supposed to be Saturday. <laughs> it's like what day's today? <laughs> Wednesday, and then he like beats the crap out of this guy. <laughs> it's just so amusing. He <laughs> kicks him down, and then he freaking slams his head in the it's piano, piano. shuts the top <laughs> of the piano on him. And then he takes out the other two guys in something totally WWF style. <laughs> it's, it was the most amazing thing. And that's the thing I was talking about earlier in the non-spoiler section that made me just like, no, nope. this has gotten eight. <laughs>
I know it's just, yeah, a few like, small parts, but it was one of those parts where just like, Elton John is the man. I don't care what anyone else says about him. And you, of course, you have the scene when they're inside the bowling alley when the dogs are, or one of the dogs at that point is now you know, chasing after uh, Harry. Mm hmm. And of course, they see him as somebody that is. Oh, yeah, in the bowling alley, in yeah. The bowling alley. <laughs> <laughs> and then all Elton John shows up inside the bowling alley, and he just kind of pops himself right in front of him, and it's just like, oh, Elton John, friend. So the dog stops, <laughs> as long as Harry was s sitting behind. And Harry and just starts behind, beating him just, down with the bowling yep, ball. Starts beating him, and, then and she eventually takes away like the friend, the friend thing, thing on him. Kill Elton John. Elton John. <laughs> but at that point, it's too they late. Both take bowling, the bowling balls, balls and... on each side, and crash him. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was totally awesome. And then the other antagonist, the uh, what was his name? Charlie Hesk. You remember the failed yeah, candidate failed on the candidate first one? The first. And then his family saved him from Armageddon, but mm -hmm. he got tasered. But it ended up saving his life. But it lost. He lost his vocal cords and his arm. Mm hmm And that yeah. he was the one that uh, at the beginning he. I was able to hack into the Kingsman's stuff, of course, when he uh, was fighting, of course, Eggsy mm -hmm. in the taxi. Yeah, and the first fight, yeah, the opening fight. They dislodged his arm off, even though he was no longer there, the arm was able to move, still do stuff, and he was able to uh, get into the system, find out where everybody was, that's where they, and how they knew where to take everybody out. Indeed. Yeah, this guy. <laughs> yeah, and this guy was just just a total self-certified yeah. jerk. Yeah, he was. He was a total jerk, even to his ex. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he he ends up blowing up his ex. I know. Because she, well, they didn't fully sleep together because he was still kind of conflicted with the whole relationship with the Swedish princess. Mm -hmm. Like he did pleasure with yes. his finger. Ex, he did. Yes, and he he didn't like that, so he killed her. Yep. After saving her from taking, taking drugs. drugs. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. It's just like, oh my gosh. <sighs> but yeah, it, it was definitely interesting, that's for sure. And yeah, that was one of the things, like in the ending fight scene, like what, he essentially hacks into his arm, mm -hmm. and he forces him to detach himself from it by just latching it onto a tree. tree. <laughs> and then they do this one-armed fight. As a gentleman. Yep. And then he finally, after everything he did, he finally kills him. Mm -hmm. He breaks his neck, which the sound effect was pretty legit. Yep. But they did it off camera. Off camera. Yep. Like anything that was like extremely violent or that you could actually see something bad happening, they you were pretty good about keeping it off cam. Mm -hmm. Whereas they, I mean, they did keep grizzly bits, like the guy being... Fed into a meat grinder. Not just one. Two. But two. Oh yeah, and that reminds me, like the <laughs> whiskey. Yeah. Like That's he's essentially he's essentially a he's a statesman, and he mm -hmm. is a good guy. He just had a really messed up thing happen to him, and so he decided mm -hmm. to take things into his own Some hands. Hand. Yeah. Like essentially, his his wife, who was pregnant with his son, got killed by oh, a bunch of. It was his high school sweetheart, technically. Okay, high school sweetheart, girlfriend, <laughs> girlfriend. whatever, point, significant <laughs> other. There you go. His partner, significant other, whatever. Like non, hey. non, non, you know, descriptive, whatever, for a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was killed by a couple of, like, heroin cokeheads who were holding up a convenience store. store. Yep. And so he took this as just, like, this needs to happen. Mm -hmm. All people who do drugs need to be destroyed, and that will lead to peace. Mm -hmm. Indeed, and that led to an epic fight with him because he has like this electronic lasso, lasso. which can just eviscerate anything it touches. Mm -hmm. And it's play. jump rope with that. <laughs> I know, right? He like cut the one guy's legs off in the in the mountain scene. Mm -hmm. and we'll get into the scenes like a little after this, but yeah, and he goes into the meat grinder finally. Mm -hmm. 
and it was like it actually showed him going in, but it didn't like show the overly like grotesque bits. Yeah, not it wasn't too gr grotesque. No. Yeah, but there was a big pile of meat at the end. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> it was it was neat, but yeah, some of the set pieces there, like mm -hmm. I mean, let's talk about that. Like, like let's talk about the mountain. And the 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 ski the lift ski and all that, like that was insane. I'm not gonna lie. It, I can see how some people would think it would be a little bit hokey, mm -hmm. but I mean, it's still it got the job done. It was still really neat. I thought. Mm -hmm. I definitely agree. I mean, especially I mean, when they're escaping after they got the vial of, of course, the um antidote and they're running back and they're on the lift going back down of course that's when his nemesis of mm -hmm. course takes out of course the line and they start swinging now but it, he makes it forces it so it's like spinning while they're going down and so they're <laughs> like are swinging around really quickly like they're on some kind of ride mm -hmm. and holding on for their lives pretty much at that point while it's they're swinging up into almost it looks like they're gonna go into a, this open gorge there mm -hmm. and in the end I mean they're able to make it which was awesome <laughs> mm -hmm. but you see it sliding down and it gets really really close to this like this little estate little area and it, looks like a almost could be like a nursing home or just a nice little senior living area <laughs> you have all these older seniors out there just relaxing and they see this big huge thing just coming right at them and they're like holy shit <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but it stops oh. right there in front of them <laughs> it was awesome that part I loved <laughs> indeed and yeah, like that's and that's mm -hmm. why we love this movie is just the over the topness. So, mm -hmm. once again, my final score I'm giving it because and just solely because of Elton John. <laughs> Elton John was awesome. And his bits. Mm -hmm. I'm giving this an eight out of ten. Solid eight out of ten. I think you should see this movie. It's entertaining. It won't waste mm -hmm. your time. If you like the first one, you will probably like this one. That's for sure. Okay, and you. I definitely would agree with an eight myself too. I really enjoyed the movie. I mean, I still like the story, definitely. The different pieces, of course, Julianne Moore I mean, just, as Poppy, but that was <laughs> awesome. <laughs> just she was so funny. Yeah. And of course, the cute little puppies. I love the puppies. They were so cute. And the fact that, of course, I mean, if they saved Harry, Harry was back. That was very an emotional part too, and that was nice. Mm-hmm. But it was it was definitely I I really enjoyed it that's for sure indeed so yeah I hope you guys enjoyed this and uh, we will be trying to do more of these and improving upon them in the future indeed so yes have a good one see ya. Yeah.